<clears throat> Hello and welcome uh, to our presentation on library partnership certification. My name is Rachel Caldwell. I'm the scholarly communication librarian at the University of Tennessee Libraries. And I'm Robin Sin, the director for collections and open strategies at Iowa State University. Today we're going to talk about library partnership certification for journal publishers and learn how it can be used to help find potential publishing partners, especially among smaller independent publishers, including many societies. We'll also talk about how library partnership or LP not only helps you find these publishers, but also begin conversations with them about library values and library publishing services. There are many ways to evaluate a journal publisher. There are the usual institutional based metrics such as cost per use, institutional authorship, and so on. Existing corporate level evaluations include whether or not the publisher is a certified B corporation or their consideration of environmental, sustainable, and government's fac governance factors, or ESG. One growing set of metrics evaluates publishers through their alignment with the professional values of librarianship, and LP certification is one of these. We assess values alignment from the premise that a publisher's practices demonstrate their values. And we can evaluate any publisher using a rubric that defines the library values aligned practices. And in general, the higher the score in the rubric, the more aligned that publisher is with library values, making them a stronger partner with libraries. And this is library partnership certification in a nutshell. It might help to think of an analogy with LEED certification, which looks at construction practices, whereas, as Rachel just said, LP certification looks at publishing practices. So the LEED program has nine categories with 110 points possible, whereas Library Partnership has four categories with 57 points possible. LEED evaluates many aspects of building that revolve around energy efficiency and sustainability. Sustainable lumber sources and indoor air quality are part of the LEED rubric. In a similar way, LP certification evaluates publisher behaviors related to lots of different things. Does a publisher participate in initiative for open abstracts? Does a public publisher or is a journal editorial board a member of the Committee on Publication Ethics. So LP certification has four categories, access, community, rights, and discoverability. Each assigned points for actions that are publicly visible. The maximum number of points available is 57. Overall scores are broken into tiers so that an individual without a lot of time can get a feeling for a publisher with a look at the score and the tier. Tier one publishers received the highest ratings and then we descend down to tier four. You can use the total score or parts that are most important to you. Because as you can see, these four different categories include and encompass a lot of different publisher behaviors. Access focuses on access, business models that support OA, equity, appearance in the DOAJ. Rights deals with author rights, the ability to reuse content, and the ability to use the content for educational purposes. Community is all about the publisher and how they interact with scholars, institutions, and libraries. Discoverability is more about having the resources to make the journals findable through use of persistence persistent identifiers and good metadata, as well as preservation practices and accessibility um, adherence to guidelines like from W3A GK. You can also pull out only the items that match your own values and strengths most closely. You don't have to use the overall score or the category scores. You can mix and match individual items to obtain the information you need to support the mission of your library publishing efforts. The rubric is available now. Here's a short link. And you can use it yourself to see how well it works or maybe what needs to be tweaked because we really want feedback from as many people as we can obtain it. Anything you can tell us, whether it's just a thumbs up or some suggestions on the rating would improve the tool. 
In practice, we hope a library publisher can utilize LP certification at different levels for different purposes. Smaller publishers can be identified and assessed using the whole rubric. At different times, you may focus on a category or the overall scores. We think a useful pattern to look for are publishers with high ARC or AR and low D scores. In this table are the LP certification scores for five real publishers. The number of journals each one publishes in, is in parentheses on the x-axis. The largest publisher we evaluated was Elsevier, and the publisher with the highest partnership score was the Society for Neuroscience, which publishes two journals. So uh, Elsevier on this table and this graph is B, and the Society for Neuroscience is D. For those making collections decisions, these two publisher scores spark interesting conversations. But for library publishers, the journal publishers of greatest interest might be those that fall in the middle. We're going to delve deeply into the score of publisher C, which is a faculty owned single journal publisher to look at this. Publisher C's overall score places them in tier three partnership, which is fairly low in the certification. But the scores in each category, rather than overall scores, help us understand uh, Publisher C's story a little better. The ARC scores at the bottom left, that is access plus rights plus community scores, are very similar to the overall scores. However, Publisher C is closer to the tier one partners in this breakdown than in the overall scores. This indicates a potentially stronger library partner in Publisher C than in Publishers A and B. The top right table isolates access plus rights scores and demonstrates the strong partnership potential even further. These tables suggest that ARC or A plus R scores might be especially important scores for library publishers to consider. We have to score more publishers to see if this holds up. Holds up. It's still a little too early to know what trends we might see in a larger sample, but it's of interest to us. What's also noticeable for publisher C story is the precipitous drop in the discoverability score. This score is a sum of credits for practices in preservation, accessibility, using identifiers such as DOIs and ORCIDs, metadata schema, and so on. All the technologies and integrations that can be really overwhelming for a smaller publisher to understand, let alone implement. Publisher C is a very good example of a partner that would benefit from working with a library publisher. This could be as large as moving the platform to a library publisher plat platform, or a smaller scale consultation with library publishing services, uh, giving direction on how to improve uh, discoverability practices. Time for a story, but the story hasn't happened yet because we're still very early days, but we hope it happens. A library publisher is aware of a society publisher somehow tied to their campus. If the library publisher uses the rubric before starting a conversation, they'll have some good information about the current behaviors of the publisher and have that help to get the conversation started on the right foot. You can also use the rubric during the conversations as an educational tool and to demonstrate that the services and functionality um, are, that are available to them. The conversations are important to have because we don't want to lose more small publishers to the big commercial platforms. Plan S is making waves even among the smaller publishers, as are the federal funding mandates in the United States. We can use the rubric to show our values to the publisher, as well as to see if theirs are aligned with ours. It all comes down to a matchup. And it should always be considered, this rubric should always be considered a list of possibility. It's not a line in the sand. It's not all or nothing. It's guidance. And we also think that consortia have a big role to play here as well as library organizations. Uh, there are many examples of faculty who might start a journal and struggle to get cited, to get submissions and visibility, etc. They might wonder why that's the case. Um, there are also editorial boards who have chosen to become independent and no longer work with one of the five biggest publishers. The LP certification rubric can help start a conversation with smaller publishers about these topics and hopefully, as Robin mentioned, preserve publisher diversity. We want to outline the options for support uh, that we have for values aligned publishers as one of their recognized partners, academic libraries. Additionally, when we look at the rubric as a list of values aligned practices, 
The rubric can help a wide range of independent publishers, including those in low and middle income countries. With models such as the Next Generation Library Publishing Project and the Library Publishing Coalition's directory, there are a growing list of resources for libraries to consult in order to help publishers find answers to questions such as how do I add DOIs, and what might happen to my journal in the next five years, and so on. So to sum up uh, the last few slides, knowing the practices that we are looking for, as well as the challenges that some smaller or independent publishers face, helps us know who we might want to engage with. It can help us reach out to publishers we want to support. The rubric can serve as a point of reference for these conversations and then lead to resource decisions. For a library publisher, resource decisions will involve publishing support capabilities. For a collections library, and resource allocations might be based on how willing a publisher is to become more aligned with library values. But in either case, the rubric is not meant to be punitive. It is meant to improve transparency and communication um, and communicate expectations and preferences. It is designed as a guide that will be revisited and revised. So what are we currently doing now? We're out and about talking up LP certification. We want feedback, so please let us know what you think. We're putting together an advisory board to guide us and keep this from being a two-person show. This is the last of our spring presentations. Besides the advisory council, council, we're working on putting together a group of librarians for training and to start using the rubric in earnest and share scores for, we'd hope, up to 100 publishers. What can you do now? Well, we need recommendations for publishers and journals for us to assess. So first thing on that list, there's a form that you can go to to submit recommendations. Use that rubric, give it a trial run, give us some feedback, let us know what you like about it and what you don't like about it. And if you wish to be kept apprised of our progress, there's an interest form that you can also fill out. Thank you so much for your time and attention. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And our project uh, website is here on this last slide. Thank you so much.